we want to prove how it is i mean gender is a speech act before we move forward i would like to explain one thing more that in case of conversation analysis and speech act theory both background identity factors they have no relevance but a direct relevance is possible when they the participant the speaker mention them openly clearly okay in case of speech act theory how identity is known because the speaker never introduces like conversation analysis uh, uh, his or her identity who is talking uh, and uh, what is the age what is the class what is the location etc so for example here we have discussed in the last module you are hired so this utterance itself shows that the person is hired and hiring happens when a person works in some organization the person is professional so this is how we reach identity of the speaker now we want to prove that gender is a speech act aston helps here to know this he says that whenever we perform a speech act actually this single act is composition of three acts and we perform these three acts simultaneously first we say something this is called locutionary act we say he involves other modes of talking as well we say we speak or we write or we sign we talk through signed language through gestures instead of words or sometimes we just use visuals so we talk through paintings we talk through other things like that so whatever ways we use because here our concern is only with speech we focus on it it should have some information some content it should have accurate form with reference to grammar the statement the utterance uh, that carries that statement should be grammatically correct and then it must have meaning this is locutionary act then what you say is some act it carries your intention it carries elocution intention or elocution and sometimes we also call it force elocutionary force so what we have done in uttering something this is called elocutionary act we might have promised we might have invited we might have warned somebody we might have advised somebody so promising inviting advising these are elocutionary act the third thing is when you have uttered something what is the effect of that utterance on your address this is called pallocution or pallocutionary act so first you say something locutionary act then you perform some act by saying something this is a locutionary act and then that gives some effect that shows some effect and influence on the addressee this is pallocutionary effect for example after your utterance the addressee may agree may reply may take some action may bring something for you or simply may remain silent or there is another possibility that the addressee leaves you alone all these are pallocutions aston says that we are concerned only with elocution 
he says locution is matter of grammar and semantics this is outside our concern and he says pallocution uh, we don't need it because this is not in control of the speaker so that's why he says when we talk about speech act that only means illocutionary act but on this pallocutionary act is not considered how can we say that what we intended was performed whether our promise is understood as promise our order is understood as order our advice is understood as advice how can we do that unless we don't consider pallocution so that's why pallocution is necessary essential and especially in the context of this course language and gender we do need this pallocution it is the pallocution act that is the response of the addressee which is important to reach speaker's intentions because this is the way that uh, takes us to in elocution otherwise uh, intention is in mind nobody can uh, directly reach that nobody can uh, we just only approximate it and the only way, way is that we note its effect on the addressee this is also the way we can uh, understand relationship between uh, the intention of the speaker and uh, gender the language use and gender how because this conveys what the speaker thinks about gender for example i advise you wear trousers this is a trend we call it a locution this is what we say now it is an advice this is the intention we call it a locution now if the addressee is a girl and wears trousers so this is pallocution after that we can understand that this was an advice but our task won't finish here with reference to language and gender why does this advice was given to the girl it would tell us the gender ideology of the speaker this is how pallocution helps us to know the relationship between language and gender the word advice indicates that the utterance is advice and the addressee takes this advice then uh, she wears it the advice is gendered how how do we know that because in some cultures parents and uh, elders and teachers they advise girls that uh, you want wear pants or knickers you should wear trousers so we conclude from this uh, module that success of speech acts depends on the intended pallocution from pallocution we can judge we can assess whether a speech act is performed or not and from pallocutions we also know whether our talk our speech act was gendered or not